today's episode by special request of Neil Burridge, Grand's Guide to Honing Bronze Age Bifaces. Hey, Grand here. Uh, I'm going to do a special episode today. Uh, called on by Neil Burridge. Uh, we're addressing his Bronze Age swords and he wanted to know how we were keeping them up so well. He was impressed. He looked at the videos and he saw how they had a good edge even after we had cut through the uh, ballistics gelatin heads. And he said that most people he sends the uh, blades to, they lose their razor sharp edge uh, after they use them and they can't sharpen it. So uh, he wanted us to know what we were doing. He didn't want to uh, actually uh, if you can see it's shaving my arm. He didn't want to pollute what we do in any way. He just wanted us to show how we're keeping it up. Man. But um, he wanted to know how we were doing such a good job, how we were keeping them clean, what we were doing, and he didn't want to add anything. He just wanted us to show our method or technique. And I was like, well, we can definitely do that for you. So today we're going to talk about home stones. And uh, these were very sacred to the Norse. And almost all cultures had used blades and edges back in the day. Uh, that's how you uh, sharpen the metal. Uh, and if you look at the old Norse legend of uh, Thor, when he fought the giant that had a home stone for a weapon, he threw it at him, and when Thor threw his hammer, he smashed the home stone, and the piece got stuck in his head. That's the story where uh, Magni has to pick the leg up off of Thor, but he never got the piece out of his head. So the problem is, if you drop a home stone, like this broke, I didn't break it myself, but it's kind of like bad luck. It's like breaking a mirror. Uh, there's also one story, just to add, uh, about Odin. He had a home stone, and he was walking along and saw two giants that he was trying to pass, and they were thralls. Well, he knew he was going to have trouble getting into the, the uh, um, Jotunheim, and they were out trying to plow a field, and they were using a scythe, to, well, not plow, but they were using a scythe to actually cut the field. Excuse me, the plow. But they were using a scythe to cut the field, and they were having a very hard time. Well, Odin tells him he could do it faster than any of them put together. They don't believe him, so he goes over there and he uh, uses a stone on the side and shows him how easy it is to cut after it's actually sharp and not dull. Right after that, he throws a stone over his shoulder and they all run over there and fight each other and kill each other trying to get a hold of the stone. That's how valuable these things were. They, they, they'd find in the graves. As a matter of fact, we posted something recently with a lot of these hone stones that they found in different graves. And it's one of the most common thing because they always bury the warriors with their weapons. They live as joined to that man and use it with a stone. Uh, modern home stones like these have, are usually made out of uh, synthetic materials. They're not actual stones, so they can be made in any shape, and they're not as rare as they were back in the day to have a good, nice, long one. Like, we have a really long one here, but modern ones, like I said, have a rough side and a smoother side. A lot of the natural ones, you have to use separate stones or stains back in the day. But anyway, let's get the video going here, and we'll actually start sharpening and show what we do. First of all, you have to assess your blade. Has it been bent in any way? If it is, uh, even like the old katana, they had special uh, jigs or rigs to bend it back. But you want to make sure your blade is perfectly straight as you can get it. And yes, you can put it against something. But the good thing about bronze, it, it doesn't tend to take a lot of damage like some metals. When they do bend and you bend it back, it doesn't start uh, losing its uh, uh, molecular structure where it starts breaking easily. So you can bend it back easily. That's one of the good things about bronze if it does bend. Uh, make sure it's straight. Then look at your edge and see if it's if it's if it's actually bent. It can even on even on modern swords that are tempered, you can get an edge where if it hits something just right, it bends the edge on because it's so thin, even though it's tempered. You need to straighten that back out because naturally, if you look at his blades, he's went to a lot of work, and you pay extra for this type of hardening along the edge. Most people don't do this with their bronze swords; they don't actually hammer them. You can see the hammer marks on these blades. This helps harden the bronze. But he's hardened the edge, especially by putting a groove or a niche all the way down it to help reinforce it and harden it. Well, you don't want to take any metal off that you don't want. So if you do have something that's bent to one side, you're going to have to get it straight. You might even have to bring out a uh, something like an anvil and uh, use like a, a flat chisel and a hammer, lay it down against there and bend it back straight and try to tap it just a little bit to get it as straight as possible because you don't want to lose any material. If you lose material, then you're damaging the edge and to, to grind this back like some people do with some swords with uh, sandpaper would probably be a big mistake because you'd lose so much of your blade and 
it would be I would not use sandpaper on it unless it was absolutely necessary to get the shape back. But anyway, now that we've gotten past that point, let's go straight into sharpening. What I recommend is a rough sided stone like this and on softer metals such as some soft stainless steels, uh, iron, soft steel, bronze, I'm sure it'd work the same on copper. You get your angle and you pull it across but no, don't use any oil. If this was steel and it was tempered, a lot of times I'll put some oil on there or some people wet them. The Japanese will set in a running stream with their stones and they have different grade stones. Well, we're not worried about that because this is a very soft metal. And if you notice the angle I'm keeping, this is the angle I always use for these. And I experiment with different angles. Everybody will tell you 245, 230s, or whatever. Uh, it depends on you and how quick this, the uh, edge wears out, how sharp that you want it for use, and how it performs for you. On these, I've been using about this angle here. I don't know how to tell you exactly what it is. I don't use a shadow method. I use what feels right. And I just draw the whole blade. These can be sharpened like a knife with a long enough stone. Now, this is probably not the safest way to do it. I do that. But uh, I will show you that normally I recommend this for people so they don't get mad at me if they get injured or something. Have it get something where it sticks in place. And if you're not new, if you're new to it and you're not good at it yet, you're not really, really sure of yourself, you can do this type of thing. Now, if this is a much longer weapon, which of course bronze and copper and so on is not going to be. You might even have to on very long swords, and you'll see people do this, get the right angle, and you can do that. Some people think it's not as good, but you can just go along with the blade and follow it, as long as you got that same angle. But with bronze, we don't want to sit here and take a lot off. These are already relatively, really sharp. But one of the things I do that he was interested in, and I mentioned a steel, I used to work in a butcher market. Steel uh, gives you more of a razor edge and also helps fix your edge. Let's say this edge gets folded. It's microscopically, it's like a saw teeth. This helps keep them perfectly aligned as you draw it across at the exact same angle. But what it also does is it'll also help straighten your edge, especially a soft steel like that. But you don't have to do it too much because this is actually a steel. This is an older, cheaper steel. You get really expensive, really hardened steels. This is like a soft old steel. It works perfect for this. And what happens is that gives you this beautiful edge that shaves and you all can see hair coming off, but it shaves and it's a, it's a wonderful way of doing it. And it keeps it in a perfect condition. Everybody knows how hard that was to go through, correct? But that's a razor sharp edge with the taper on this design for thrusting at the tip. And of course me doing a proper throwing technique allowing the sword to throw and accelerate. Not bad at all. Check. I'm going to use a different grip today that was suggested by Roland Warzeka just to see if it's a possibility they could have used something in some of the old drawings that we see with the Viking style swords to get a more reach, like a more of a reach out to the target to see how well it cuts. Bounced it, but it seemed to cut fine that way. Oh! Got a wee bit of trouble getting through there, but it made it through. It's not as wet as it should be. Nice. That was a nice cut. It actually went clean through. Oh! Nice. And I'm sorry, as thick as this is, that's probably as clean as you're going to get with something so small trying to muscle through it. Not very much water. Sorry, we didn't have very long to soak these. And if you look at the ring, the inside's dried. That's not what you're supposed to cut, but we didn't have enough time, so sorry guys. I still think that's extremely impressive with bronze your sword. That's a clean slice up to here, and then we get a tear where it's kind of wet. But if you look at that, I went for extreme material. This is a two and a half inches, which would be over three inches at the time of at least four inches. So I'll be cutting through like that with this, and this being dry, I can't even judge how... You can, can they see this is dry? I mean, you can actually see that. It's dry in the center. I didn't get it, get it wet very well. Oh well, I'm extremely impressed.
I think that was an excellent cut. Hey, Brian here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I had a lot of fun with these today. I mean, heck, I would want to buy these just to play around myself and not even have an extra just for any other reason, but the one happens to be elder, so normally I don't do that. But I had fun today. These are a lot of fun. This one actually performed very well. We had semi-wet uh, rolled newspaper, almost three inches, real close. That's over four inches of tatami. And for a small sword like this to slice through like that, it's impressive. And I can't even tell you if it's just four inches of tatami, considering it was so dry. We realized that we didn't have enough time to soak it. I'm not even sure how long I had it soaked. I thought it was soaked all the way through. Well. But it performed very well. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I hope Neil Burge enjoyed the video. We tried to have fun with it. Uh, test them out today. We try to show the sharpness. Uh, what they might not have covered is if you want to keep them looking really pretty, just use a scotch bright pad and wash them. You don't have to worry about a lot of oil and stuff like you would on uh, iron or steel. They'll rust easily. Because they don't rust. It will turn green eventually, but it takes a very, very long time for bronze to oxidize, kind of like copper. Like, a long time. They might get a little dark on you or get dirt on them, but if you don't want to ruin that beautiful finish, you can just go ahead and use a scotch bright pad, not too, too uh, rough. Don't use the actual uh, steel wool because that will scratch up like that, or possibly could if you press real hard. But uh, I had a lot of fun with them. I hope Neil enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be back later with the spear video uh, for the Iliad special, and before we'll actually test them out. Uh, we tried getting some poles in. We didn't like the poles we got, so we're getting different poles. I tried shaping them. I didn't, wasn't impressed with them. So we'll get that set up for you. Uh, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Uh, like us on Facebook. Help us out on Patreon. Heck, if you don't like Patreon and you want to donate to us, uh, you can do Thane Thran, spelled the old Thane spelling, T-H-E-G-N, Thran, T-H-R-A-N-D, on yahoo.com. That's my uh, PayPal uh, ID, so you can send me money directly. But be sure you send me a, an email and let me know that that's what you're doing or what you want me to do with the money. Because if we can, we'll actually use the money you donate to actually try to make what you want to see come about. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, I had a really good time, uh, and uh, Farvel.